took me about 20 years to actually be able to take a vacation from the time I got my first horse. So I was with him for every single day for 20 years. And th that was just what I wanted to do. That was my lifestyle. But you asked a really good question about horses being used as tools and why do people still think of them that way. And th this is a multi-tiered answer. So the first part of the answer is that historically, horses have partnered with us throughout history as our beasts of burden. So they plowed our fields, they went to war with us, they pulled the carriages, they were our transportation. You know, that was their relationship with us. Now that technology has taken over and they no longer serve that purpose, it then became more of a status symbol. The more horses you had, the better horses you had, the more money you had, and it became an ego-fulfilling thing. So then there's the revenue side of it. You now have people that show and race and compete and make a lot of money with these animals. So if those horses are not fulfilling those purposes, um, if the people don't have a conscience, they'll just throw them away. So why aren't they looking at all horses as a relationship and not having them as part of these commodities? because of all of the above. It's because of the history, it's because they're still making money, and it's because it's still fulfilling some part of their ego. They haven't realized the other side of the horse that is our spiritual and emotional nurturing side that we do get when we are doing those activities with the horse, but not when we're just spending quiet time with them or just caring for them. It's totally different. Um, and, you know, when we're doing this, we're not making any money we're not winning any races there's nothing here to boost our ego but we go home with such full hearts that there's nothing that is going to be able to equal that so our values today as humans of what we're valuing is important we still value material things as more important than emotional things than more important than relationship that's where the problem is so until we have a paradigm shift where more people are associating a horse with an emotional beast of burden rather than a physical beast of burden, we're still going to continue to have this problem. Um, another thing I want to bring up is um, even though we don't do wild horse rescue, there's many great organizations out there that do. However, the reason they are eliminating the wild horses out there is so that the cattle industry has more grazing land for their cattle. Well, I can only hope that the people that are supporting the wild horse rescues are vegans or vegetarians. Because if they're not, then them supporting the wild horses is are also supporting their demise as well by eating that. So there's a lot of things that we do to horses that we're not even conscious that we are a part of their demise. Um, even though slaughter was outlawed in the United States, the horses are still getting shipped to Canada and to Mexico and being slaughtered there for consumption overseas. Um, part of our job here at Sapphire Sanctuary is to prevent those horses from going to those auctions and potentially going into that slaughter pipeline. Um, most of the horses that go to slaughter are healthy, sound, rideable, fine horses that either people just don't have the emotional connection with or don't want to be bothered with or something happened to them and they have no more what they call it used for. Well, we don't like to use horses in any way. Nobody wants to be used. Um, and I think that we don't, a lot of people just don't see it like that. It's just something that we do use because that's been part of our history. Um, I want to rewrite history. I, I want to change history. I want to get people to see the other side so that this doesn't have to happen and that the rescues aren't full and that the wild horses are left where they're at and that people can really value them for what they're worth, um, which are just these amazing emotional empathic teachers. Um, and that's what I love about it. I mean, I don't need to do yoga or meditation because I get to come here every day. <laughs>